I look at the 150 year anniversary as a time of reflection um, as opposed to a celebration because I think you know the law society the profession haven't always been on the right side of history particularly when it comes to you know tangata whenua um, women in the past you know if you ask Ethel Benjamin now I mean she was blocked from the law library she was the first woman lawyer in New Zealand. Serapira Nangata was the first Māori lawyer. All those years ago they did those things, but they didn't have the support of the law society and the profession. And so I think it's really important that we not forget that. And while we can say, yeah, we've come a long way, we have a long way to go still. There have been significant numbers of women coming through law schools for a number of years now, um, and yet we don't retain those women and they don't achieve superior management positions, so that's an issue. We're losing younger practitioners who have done a whole, a whole law degree but don't find that the careers for them for various reasons. Over time um, we need to be more diverse and inclusive of um, all kinds of people. We represent the community and we should reflect the community and, and we don't. I'd like to see more Māori and Pacific lawyers. The more diverse that our workforce is, the better, and the better the outcomes will be for us and our clients and for society. What I would like for our legal community is just to be really conscious about our health and, um, you know, after all we've all got families and need to pay attention to more than just our work. You see time and time again, mental health is such a huge issue. I think the whole model of law needs to be re-evaluated. Um, at the moment I don't think it's people focused enough, I don't think it's focused on the well-being of the profession. There needs, in my opinion, needs to be more available help and assistance to lawyers to deal with some of those stresses. I think we need to adapt more in terms of lifestyle balance. Just treating each other with love and respect. We need to look at different work models that, are, that are now allow different parts of our society to work differently. Um, Technology is allowing us to do that, to work from home, to be with our children. The main challenge, and this is probably something that others will mention as well, is the, is the access to justice. We need a good strong legal system for so that people have access to justice, that the state is uh, challenged and that we live in a healthy democracy. Legal aid is, is a big problem in terms of access to justice in my view. Personally I think maybe finding a way to structure legal aid in such a way that is fair um, for those trying to access it and also those who are being um, allocated legal aid clients. My hope generally is that we move away from a heavy punitive uh, type system where we take the focus away from punishing or denouncing and deterring offending and particularly at the lower level to the mid level looking at how we can change people, how we can help people to uh, avoid further offending again. I'd like to see the community armed with more knowledge about the law. There's a lot to be said about um, some form of legal education for um, students in schools. But I would hope for me that in 150 years time Everybody will be well educated enough to actually understand the legal system themselves. And on top of that, I'd want us to be able to do it all in Te Reo Māori, so everyone will be fluent. So we've got a huge increase in technology. I could be scared of that, or we could think about how it's going to aid and develop how we practice. And I think there are some huge opportunities there. The Chinese, Singapore, all these Asian countries, they're leading the way with AI and modern technology. And what they all agreed was that for the legal profession to remain relevant, to survive essentially, is that one, number one, we all have to learn how to be tech savvy. A lot of those um, repetitive, low value tasks will be replaced. The machines can do them faster, cheaper, and more accurately. And what can't be replaced by machines is that human contact. So your ability to show empathy, compassion, be a good communicator, have human evaluative judgment are going to be what makes you sought after. And that's what I call the business case for compassion. You know, we all say it's really, you know, it's important to be kind, but in actual fact, in order to remain relevant, that's going to be, that's going to be it.
for the next 150 years. It's hard to, to visualise that far forward, but um, I would, I'd, I'd like to see the profession remain as relevant as it always has and to improve on that. I hope that we find a way to address the issues within our culture so that we don't have a year like 2018 again. I would like to be a part of change so that when my children come through, it's a better version of, of what it is now. I think it's really important that everyone gets behind the change um, and yeah, uh, it really needs to come from um, everyone right down from junior lawyers and those from up top. It's an incumbent on I think the older practitioners to lead by example, to be bold and outspoken where we see that things aren't right and to um, to, take, to make change and I think that's really incumbent on the older males in the profession to lead by example. Generational change needs to occur so I hope in 150 years we can look back and say today was the beginning of that journey to create a culture that is diverse, that is inclusive, that people enjoy going to work, have the intellectual st stimulation and enjoy the work that they do. So that's my hope for the profession over the next 150 years. You know, I believe that we can change for the better. I firmly believe, I wouldn't be president if I didn't believe that. That we can, you know, that we can be more inclusive and therefore diverse, that equity will be the touchstone. That we can deliver access to justice for all. Because we have to, because if we don't, then we aren't fulfilling the very purpose for which we do this, which is to be just. Be just and fear not, is the motto. So we can do that.